Oh hi. Hi everybody, it is Willie's American Guitars and we are going to lay a video on you, man. Hey, so um, this is cool. I mean, uh, right away it just sparkles. It's pretty. And it sparkles everywhere. It's got abalone trim, pearl trim, everywhere. We are talking everywhere. And that means, of course, friends, that this is a D45. How they came up with that number, you guys know this, but in the old days, you could buy a guitar any size for 18 bucks if it was mahogany. 28 bucks any size for 28 bucks if it was rosewood. And if you had a lot of money and you're a rich guy, for 45 bucks, you could have it all trimmed in hand, put in there all this trim on it. That's kind of an amazing thing, but it's kind of true. So any size, O, double O, triple O, in mahogany, 18 bucks. Any size, O, double O, triple O, back in the day, turn of the century, I know, it was a long time ago. It was like days ago. Turn of the century, 28 bucks. And then the 40 levels really were these pearl trim guitars, and that's a very simplified thing, but D45s have always been um, so sought after, and here's partly why. In World War II, everybody had to, that was manufacturing anything, had to go towards a war effort. So you were gonna be making anything from artillery shells to wood products for handles, for hatchets, for anything like that. You were really ordered to stop making guitars. Now, both Gibson and Martin continued to make guitars through the war, but the one thing that Martin did is say, we can't do these pearl trims. A lot of the boys are overseas fighting in World War II, and just those craftsmen, were they were like, come on, we gotta just do these other things for the war effort, and then we're gonna make inexpensive guitars. So in, after World War II, after 1945, there are no 45 D45s. It's not until 1968 that they came back. So in those 50s and 60s, people wanted D45s, but they didn't make them. So you had to go back and buy them, and that really was the beginning of the vintage market, is look chasing these pearl trim guitars. So they've always had a thing with people and they were always top of the line and highly sought after and as you know we always say people want what they can't have and if you can't have a D45 you want a D45 and the D45 also is a thing of wood they don't put bad wood why would you do all of this work on a crap piece of wood like duh like we make guitars for a living. Martin made guitars for a hundred years before, flat top guitars for a hundred years before Gibson did. So ponder that. Now, getting to this guitar. This is 1983. 1983 is interesting because it's the 150th anniversary for Martin Guitars. Picture that. 150 years in 83. So what is it? How old is the company now? You know, write us, you know, put that in the comment section because Math is not my forte. Um, but this being an 83, it's stamped inside here and it says 150th anniversary. Now here's something else that you guys that don't really know Martin's, Martin didn't use an adjustable truss rod until 1986. What? Huh? Yes, now they have a truss rod. It's just not adjustable. The idea of a truss rod is a rod that goes through and they put the fingerboard on over there and it just keeps it rock solid, it's straight. The adjustable rod has like a tube and the rod sits in there and there is some flex to it. By virtue of having an adjustable rod, you're going to need to continue to adjust it. With the non-adjustable rod, you have a different joint in here and the rod is here with that non-adjustable, it's just solid as a rock and keeps the neck stable. But there's something about this joint here too, having a bolt right here, you go in and you're gonna turn the little screw which turns the rod. All of that creates a little bit of air gap. Uh, I am told from the Martin factory that 70% of the guitars that go to Japan, they prefer non-adjustable rods, prefer 70% today. But Martin resisted because they said it makes a difference to the tone. Whoa! Ow! That 
is a loud guitar. Everybody that picks this up is just like, whoa, wow, this is cool. So I lost my train of thought. Anyway, non-adjustable rod. So in 86 is when they had, this has a non-adjustable truss rod. Now it's the neck right now is never been adjusted and it is straight as an arrow. You'll see some of the most expensive acoustic guitars in the world don't have adjustable truss rods. They have truss rods. They just can't be adjusted. And that makes them more stable. So let that soak in for a minute. So here we have this 1983. They did make these 150th anniversaries in Brazilian rosewood. This is a beautiful premium piece of book matched Indian rosewood, the finest they could get in the day. Has this really cool 45 stripe on it. And um, that's, that's just a nice detail. And it, it, all of this, the yellowed binding by now, it looks kind of cool. You see all of this put in piece by piece and gorgeous, gorgeous. When it gets yellowed a little bit like this, it also brings out kind of the yellow glow in the pearl. So here we are back in the day, somebody bought this thinking, oh, 150 anniversary, that's cool. But it's gone up quite a bit in value, as Martins do. And this Martin is really a special instrument, right? So this is a 1983 D45. This will hold its value really well. We really love this guitar. I wanted to share it with you, and I wanted to kind of tell that story about the adjustable truss rods. A lot of guys prefer it, maybe you don't. It's a little scary. If you're like, oh man, I got my guitar that always needs adjustment, I, I get it, we understand. This won't need adjustment, period. There, let me show you one other thing before we go, and that is, Something from the lower end of the scale. We just got this in, and I, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because the video is about that 45. This is a Gibson made Kalamazoo. And you guys know Collings made Waterloo, and this is Kalamazoo. Then that's kind of the inspiration for the Waterloo brand of guitars that um, these are Gibson made products. During the 30s, they, you know, it's a Great Depression. They needed to figure out a way to make a cheap guitar out of Gibson's wood, and they did by making a Kalamazoo. This is a solid wood instrument. It's not really in tune, and I should have tuned it before, but this was kind of a random thing, so I'm picking it up and showing it to you. But yeah, <clears throat> cool guitar. I forget the model, I think this is a K21. Yes, KG21, it's all solid wood, got a really deep V-neck in it. It's not a lot of money. You couldn't replicate this. It's about two grand, it's 2150. And um, just a really cool Gibson. This is a 30s pre-war Gibson. It's an archtop, it's cool. And if you're looking for an archtop, 